we went over our layers in depth. We talked about our OSI model as a general overview, and we talked about our mnemonic to remember it. But let's backtrack a little bit and let's revisit our shipping model now that we know a little bit more about the details of our layer ones through layer seven. We had our uh, layer where we have our object that we ordered online and we put in the box. We put our box on the truck. We sent the truck over to our house and we received the device. And we have our manager here overseeing the whole process and we have our guy on the truck driving the truck to our house. So we talked about how we can break this up into different layers and how we can sort of uh, generally compare this to our OSI model for our network. Well, let's take a look now and let's move over to, over to our network. Before we had the object shipped to our house, we went online and we, uh, we ordered it and then the factory, um, they have their internal computers and th here's their network in here uh, where they're sending uh, files from their sales computer over to their shipping and receiving department. Uh, let's take a look at their shipping and receiving department and let's see if we can break down the transfer of our order as a single file that's encrypted and over to their uh, shipping and receiving department. We have our first computer here and this computer is on a 192.168.1.5 address. That's its IP address. So right there we recognize layer, uh, this computer has layer 3 capabilities it's at our network layer. Um, but we have our file and we need to, we created it and we made it down into electrical bits and we are electrical signals and we're sending it out over our cable. So our electrical signals and our transfer over our cable is all going to be layer one. So electrical signals are going through this entire diagram. So we have our cables, we have our electrical, we have our devices, we have our network interface cards, and these are all going to be layer one objects. These are all going to be, everything's gonna be happening at a layer one level because through the entire process, we're transmitting electrical signals. So that's our layer one. Next, we have our layer two. Um, we're sending this electrical signals out of our layer one net network interface card, and our network interface card has a MAC address. Uh, this MAC address is unique to that particular card and that network, that network interface card is going to try and send a data packet to our switch here. Now this is going to send it to its port which also has a, a MAC address. Now just because our switch doesn't have an IP address, our switch uh, does, can't perform routing functions and it doesn't have an IP address, uh, doesn't mean it doesn't have a MAC address. Our, uh, switch here still has a MAC address on its ports because it still need, uh, we still need to have a way from our computer in order to recognize, okay, this is where I need to send it to. There may be several other cables that, uh, that branch off, that connect in before we get to our switch. So we need to have a way that our switch can recognize that this packet is being sent to it in a way that our switch can know what port is coming in and know what port to send out back to us. So our switch also has a MAC address here. So this connection going between us and our switch here, we have a layer two, we have, a layer two, we have data link because we're utilizing our MAC addresses. We're utilizing that point-to-point -point connectivity. So our data link. Also going on at the same time, we have our network layer. Our packets have been formatted, they have IP addresses stamped on them, they have IP addresses of where they're trying to go to, and ultimately this packet that we're sending from 192.168.1.5 needs to go over to 10.0.0.5. Now we can't reach this computer just on a layer 2 data link level. We need to actually send this packet over a layer 3. We need to send this uh, through a networked layer. We need to actually route this packet uh, we need to send it through a couple different routers that we have set up, so we're going to do that. Uh, layer 3 we have going on right here and right there, as well as when we're sending uh, our packet through an IP address. So we're sending the packet to the router. The, the router is a layer 3 device because it can actually route the pa our, our packets to a different, uh, different network, a different IP address. So our incoming port on our router that's connected towards us is going to be 192.168.1.1. That's 
also what we'll have set on our computer here as the default gateway. Um, so we're connecting from our computer to that router. And that router is receiving that IP address or that, that particular packet. And it's saying, OK, I need to take this packet and I need to route it to a different, uh, different network. It's going to route it over to our 192.168.5.3 network. Uh, we'll talk about IP addresses and specifics uh, later in a separate module. Uh, but just know for now that IP addresses, again, are our logical addresses that we map to physical that we map to physical addresses and map to physical ports. So it's going to change that over to a different, uh, a different IP address network. And that packet is going to go to a, another switch. We have a second switch. And then that switch is also going to be connected to a second router. And that second router is going to be on our correct network that's connected to our shipping and receiving computer here. So we can see how this entire time, not only are we sending over layer two because we're hitting all of our MAC addresses here. There's a MAC address on our switch. There's a MAC address on our computer. There's a MAC address on both of our routers. There's a MAC address on our intermediate switch. There's a MAC address on our end computer. There's MAC addresses at every point where we have our data going to. So there's layer two. There's, data link, there's a data link layer functionality occurring everywhere. Then our layer three functionality, our network layer, is also occurring everywhere. We are, we are sending the data. We're routing it through routers uh, throughout the entire time. We're trying to point to a particular IP address. So there's layer three networking going on everywhere. The layer three layer is in play. That brings us to our layer four, our transport layer. Now we talked about our layer four is going to allow us to uh, manage how we are cutting up this packet and how we're transferring this file. We're going to manage uh, TCP or UDP. So this file that we're sending is going to be sent over TCP uh, because we need to make sure that we receive a uh, that our computer that's managing this uh, sending process over TCP receives a, OK, it's good, um, receipt back every time it breaks up the file. Uh, we'll say that our entire file is this big, uh, but our computer can't send that whole packet at one time. So it's going to break that into chunks, separate TCP packages, and it's going to send those one at a time, making sure, OK, did I receive a receipt for this one? Yep, this one got there. This one got there. This one got there. This one got there. This one that got there. Now my whole file has been transferred. So the whole time, our, the, our entire transfer process here, we're using uh, on our layer four, our transport layer, we're utilizing TCP in order to uh, transfer that packet. And then our uh, endpoint computer is also using TCP in order to ensure and in order to send a receipt back to us that we did receive, uh, we did receive each separate package. And we got it in order. And it's all good. So we have our layer one, our physical layer going on throughout our whole process here. We have our layer two, our data link layer, our MAC addresses going on throughout this whole process here. Our layer three network layer, our, RP, our IP addresses and our routers. Our layer four, our transport layer, our TCP going on. And next we have our layer five, our session layer. Now our layer five, our session layer, before a computer can start sending packets to this address, it needs to make sure that it can establish and maintain a connection. We can't just say, OK, I know what this IP address is, send a packet, and then wait. Wait, wait, wait. I, didn't rece I haven't received anything. 10.0.0.5 doesn't seem to be talking back. What's going on? We're not going to do that. We're not just going to willy-nilly send the packet out into, uh, into the abyss and then hope that we get a response back. Now that's, that's the job of our session layer. Our session layer is going to, before it starts sending this packet, uh, it's going to establish and maintain that connection to our other computer. And it's going to maintain, OK, um, our, computers, uh, our computer A and our computer B here, uh, we have uh, established a connection. We've had our handshake. So we know that we have a good we know we have a good connection. We've established how big the packets you are you're allowed to send are. We've established who's going to talk when. A, you're going to talk first, 
And then B, when you receive the packet, you're going to receive send it an acknowledgement. And A, if you don't hear from B within such an amount of time, then you're going to try and resend the packet and see if you can get another acknowledgement. And we're going to keep doing that until the package is fully sent and then our session layer is going to provide us with a termination. It's going to provide us with a, uh, we had our first handshake that said, okay, we're good to start sending packages. We can see each other. We've established communications. Our session layer is also going to say, okay, you don't have anything left for me? Okay, bye. We're no longer, I'm no longer connected to you. So that, that session has been terminated. So that's going to be all at our layer 5 level. It's going to be at our uh, session layer. Then we have our presentation layer. So we sent this packet, and this packet, uh, we need to encrypt it before we send it over our network. Because our, uh, this network that our shipping and receiving department is on, or somewhere in between our computer and our shipping and receiving computer, there may be someone potentially listening in. So we don't want to just send this over standard FTP. We want to send this over possibly FTPS, uh, because we don't want to just send this in a way that anyone on the same network uh, can be sniffing our packets and then just say, oh, look, here's a packet that's FTPS, or just standard FTP. Let me take this packet and then reassemble it myself or make a copy of it and just listen in on this so that I can see what they're sending back and forth. So our, my uh, session, my layer 6, before it sends, is going to be what encrypts the data. Computer A is going to use layer 6, our presentation layer. It's going to encrypt this uh, data before it starts sending it over our network. And then when it gets to our computer B, computer B is going to be able to decrypt this data. It's going to say, OK, I know, how to, I know how to decrypt this before I pass this on to the application layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and start decrypting this. Um, some of our comp uh, some computers and some ways that we encrypt and decrypt files require specialized applications, specialized programs. Um, those wouldn't really be working at a layer 6, a layer present, uh, a presentation layer in our network model. That may be a different idea entirely. Uh, say if we put a uh, single file and then we used a program like TrueCrypt and we encrypted that file and then we just moved it to a different computer and we uh, took that file off and then decrypted it, that's not our OSI model going on there. Uh, that's, that's just transferring our file through a USB connector. But if we're transferring our file um, through a protocol, um, so we have TCP, but TCP is uh, sort of our base protocol, either UDP or TCP. And then we also have, uh, say, FTPS that we are uh, securely sending this file rather than just a standard FTP, just a standard file transfer protocol. Then we're sending that over a encrypted protocol. So we send it. It's encrypted. We get to site B and we decrypt it. That's going to be our layer 6. That'll be our presentation layer. And then lastly, our layer 7, our application layer. We're going to take when our computer A gets ready to send that. Um, we have our application that wants to send this file, uh, possibly our operating system, um, wants to send this file because we've selected this particular computer or we're, uh, we've initiated a session to send this particular file. file. Our application layer is going to say, OK, do you have network access? Can I confirm who you're sending this to? Can I get this, uh, can I get this ready and can I create uh, make this package in a way and get it ready to send and uh, give you permit and give you this application permission to send that's all going to be at our application layer and then at our site B uh, when we're receiving this package our application which is receiving our operating system uh, may be communicating with our computer and saying okay uh, do I have permission uh, to access the network to receive this file? Am I able to take this file and now, uh, now that it's decrypted, can I present this and I can, uh, can I get it ready to show to the user? Um, so that's all going to be going on at our layer 7. That's going to be going on at our application layer. So with those in mind, we can really, uh, with our entire diagram in mind, we can see all of our layers in play. Uh, it's when we're throwing everything all in together, uh, rather than breaking down our individual layers one by one, uh, it, we see how it gets a lot more complicated. It can may, maybe even a lot more confusing to understand the distinction between the layers. But if necessary, um, you may want to go back 
maybe want to review those layers one by one and then once you get a good solid understanding of the difference between layer one our physical layer uh, layer two three etc once you get a good solid understanding of individual layers you can see uh, how on our wide scale on our wide scale network here how those apply and how those can change um, and we can see how we can use those for troubleshooting so if someone on our technician on our layer B side says hey we got a we got a, a layer 6 issue uh, or you say oh we got an issue with the presentation layer with formatting possibly the encryption or the decryption of the files going there's some issue going on there or we've got a layer 3 issue maybe this router here isn't properly routing data it's not properly taking the data and it's not routing it over to the other network properly or we've got a layer one we've got a physical issue maybe uh, we have our cables going through the ceiling there and there's a, a, a small visitor in our ceiling which is uh, chewed up uh, chewed up one of our cables inside of the ceiling and now we have a layer one we have a physical layer issue so um, take a take a look at our OSI model learn the OSI model learn what each of the layers means and then use this when you are analyzing a network when you are analyzing connectivity issues in order to help narrow down problems at individual layers and help to better understand how networking works and how we send and receive data